Okay guys, I've got the yak um, all buttoned up. Everything on it but the cow. I've got the cow ordered. And it'll be here in a couple of days. I bought a new cow. Um, just so I can... Won't have all the extra holes in it. Now, this thing is balanced right out to where it was without the lead on it. Um, I guess where the DLE sticks out just a little bit farther and I'm running a 19-inch um, prop now instead of a 16. And I've added ply in the motor box and firewall. That's added a little bit of weight plus the electronic ignition. and So it's balancing perfect. I had an option if, if it was still going to be tail heavy I could have put another six volt battery in here somewhere to run the electronic ignition but now I don't have to so I've got this power box I can just run it right off the power box so um, I'm happy that I don't have to add any more weight because weight is robbing you so this thing had extra weight to begin with so that's why it was sluggish uh, you know, weight and horsepower is just a big, you know, a big difference. So this thing's got a lot more horsepower, and I don't even have to add any more weight. So I'm really happy with this uh, setup the way I got it. So let me take everything back apart now, and I can go back inside, and I'll show you how to wire this power box up. Okay, guys, I got my uh, everything apart now, and I'm getting ready to uh, hook up this RCCSK power box. I got this from Red Wing RC. Um, I like them. So I can use uh, two cell lipos. I got two of them in here. Um, everything balanced out good. So later on, I'm going to come back and fasten these down a, a little more. But I'm kind of just going to show you how to hook this up. I'm going to change this receiver. This is what was in there. And it's an older JR. And I was just messing around here a while ago, and I just realized I didn't have a, a, a power safe for my throttle return. So I'm going to hook up this new Spectrum. But just to show you and get rid of this first, I'm going to hook up uh, everything off the board here. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got eight spots. Uh, and these are for your... Uh, servos and the nice thing about this is it does have a double like if you were running two alerons over here it's already got it um, so you wouldn't have to run a Y harness but I've got it set up I'm going to show you take this apart a little at a time so here's the throttle um, so this would be number number one and it's even marked on here uh, which way to put everything minus plus and signal so make sure you put that in there right then we'll come back and we'll straighten this wiring up All right, here's the aileron see it's always the right aileron first that's number two put it over here Here's, um, I got dual elevators, so here's the right elevator. Hook it up. And then number four is rudder. Hook it up. Here's the auxiliary one, which is the other aileron, which would be my left aileron, six, and this on seven. Okay, now I can get rid of this receiver.
All right, what they do is give you a pack of wires and find them. What they have is um, two that are regular leads. That's going to power your receiver. And then they got some here that's just all signal leads that you can put in here so it's just less wire is all. So what I'm going to do is take uh, number one, which is throttle. They got um, a little clip on and the spectrum I have to use this in. These are both female ends, so um, just got to make sure you get all your polarities right. So here's throttle. That'd be number one. Then when I plug it in up here, plug it into the corresponding one. So this is number one. It goes in. And then um, I'm going to start using the signal leads ones. So I'm going to go... Uh, We can use black for aileron. So, to find the black one here. And this is going to be my first aileron. Or aileron. And then I'm going to use use the white one next that's my first elevator <clears throat> so I'm going to put the white one in And I'm going to use the red one. For a rudder. Put my red one in. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to use this other set, the black one again, there's my other aileron which is auxiliary one, and I'm going to use the red one for auxiliary two, and that would be my other elevator, so I got red and black. So then, uh, five is my gear channel. I want to say that open. And I used black first. So this one is going to go into six. And then my red one. My other elevator. Go into seven. Okay. So now let's test everything. My switch. Gotta hook up my switch. This is coming from the switch. Um, this one goes in the center here. For your switch and she's off later on I got to come back here too once I get all this down I'm gonna figure out where we're gonna do these let's hook up a battery hook up 
one battery. Let's hook up the other battery. Yeah, this is why I like this thing. Um, it's got dual redundancy. I mean, time you get your Optima Kill and, and your uh, LiPo regulator and all that, you, you're not talking probably about another 30 bucks and you get this and then I can, it just, you know, perfect, I think. All right, let me turn my remote on. I'll turn my switch on. Everything is working. Okay. Now, I'm going to run my Optima Kill off of here too. I'm going to show you how you can do that. So let me turn this back off. Let me show you a few things about this thing. If this switch was to go up, so let's unhook it, it stays on. This is just a, a it's a cut current. It, it doesn't turn it on, it's just a, um, so that's a nice feature. So if the switch would go off, and then if one battery goes off, you still got current without it changing. Um, so, I'm telling you, this is just, and you're not drawing off your receiver. Um, the 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 one that was all together, the one that had the three, that's what's powering your receiver. Um, it stays five volts currents in in here to uh, to keep this receiver at five. All right, so let's cut her back off. Um, turn the radio off. I'm going to use the uh, gear switch for my Optima Kill. Okay, so I plug, I'm going to plug this white one into the gear. And then over here where it says um, CDI, this is for my ignition cut. I'm going to plug the white one into it. Okay. Now, I've got an extra one here. I've got actually five and eight extra. But I'm going to use eight. I'm going to plug it in because this is regulated here um, to, uh, like I said, it's 5.2 volts. And then over here where it says CDI, you got in and out. Um, I'm going to plug it in. So that's going to fire that. So let's turn the remote on. Okay, turn the switch on. Now you can see the CDI has ignition. And then when I flip the switch, it turns the ignition on and off. So now I can cut the ignition on and off. So now all I've got to do is here, I got CDI out. I just got to run this another wire down and through here to hook to my ignition. Okay, I've put an extension on my uh, electronic ignition. Um, that's where you would plug the battery in. So I've put an extension on. And then now they give you one more wire here because these are both uh, female ends. And then you plug this into the CDI out and then plug it in to my extension. So now I'll tidy this up, let it run down in there, and 
we're all done. So as so you can see, it's pretty simple. So it gives you the the uh, the ignition cut. It uh, regulates everything down. Now later on, I'll I'll go back in here. I'll show you where I can adjust this. I'm going to adjust this up to exactly six volts, so everything is running on six volts. I think they set the factory to um, 5.2 for your servos. Now once you adjust this up, it's for all your servos. So <clears throat> if you're running 7.4s, you're going to want to put 7.4s in everything, <clears throat> uh, even your ignition, I mean even your uh, throttle. So be careful with that. But I'm going to get a voltmeter and just check this and get them right at 7. Point, uh, I mean uh, 6 volts.